So you're interested in building your own DIY CNC? Good, because I've got the video for you. This is a complete build on my Plasma and Router CNC. I will tell you everything I learned and all my mistakes. So it's time to learn, fail and succeed, because this is everything you need to know to build your own cheap DIY CNC. Hi, I'm BDB and welcome to my channel. Quick word guys before we start this video, if you like these kind of videos, please consider subscribing. I'm working hard to release at least one video per week. And the next two videos are going to be on my homemade car lift and on my DIY 40, yep, 40 ton press, not 20, 40 ton press. Also, I'm linking all the plans in these videos. It's going to be in PDF format. So you're going to have something to start up with your own build. All right, back to the CNC. Okay guys, so buckle up because we have a lot of things to cover in this build. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the function and dimensions of the CNC. Also, we're gonna see the mechanical build, the electrical components. I'm gonna show also one electrical diagram for one axis. We're gonna talk about the software I'm using to run the CNC. I will talk about the drive system. By drive system, I mean, should I use a ball screw or a timing bell, or even rack and pinion. We will see the precision of the CNC, depending on which drive system I'm using. I'm gonna do a cutting test to give you a taste of what the machine can do. And finally, the cost for that cheap DIY CNC. All right, let's start with function and dimensions. So first of all, I've completed the CNC a year ago and I worked with it ever since. And I usually use it in plasma configuration. I can also use it as a router. I only have to install a sacrificial board that I made. So the travel on this machine is for the X axis, 54 inches, 27 inches in the Y axis. And on the Z axis, it's 10 inches. It is a perfect size for my shop. I designed the CNC using 2x2 tubing and some laser cut at quarter inch plates. Okay, so what you see here is the table flip it upside down. I clamped some flat bars underneath the table, uh, which is in fact the top of the table, to make sure that the tubing and the diagonal flat bars would stay flat once welded. And then I added the legs and that was pretty much it for the table section. This is the gantry. Again, I use the same technique of clamping rigid chunk of steel to keep everything as flat and straight as possible during welding. For the guides, I use linear bearings on all axes. On the gantry, to position the bottom rail of the linear bearing, I cut a stick that I use to clamp the rail on the tubing. Then I use the rail as a jig to drill and tap the holes. All this care is taking to have the motion of the X axis parallel to the table. At the end, I was within 20,000 of an inch on the overall length of 54 inches for the X axis. Everything needs to be as flat, straight and square as possible. Because at the end, your machine will be more precise. It will cut in straight line. It will produce square parts when you need it. Being a mechanical engineer, I always refer for the electrical side of the machine as some sort of voodoo magic invocation that makes electricity and commands from the computer move, I don't know, magically motors and stuff. In fact, for this CNC, it ain't that complicated. First, I bought a kit on eBay. With the kit, you're gonna get three NEMA 23 428 ounces stepper motors. You're gonna get also the drives for the motor. You're gonna have the power supplies and a breakout board. So with this kind of kit, the computer is the brain. In real time, it will send commands to the breakout board. Then this fellow will send the info to the drives and that powers up the stepper motor. The breakout board is not your only option. Matter of fact, this is now an older technology. You can now use a controller that have his own chip. So they have their own brain. 
You need to understand that having the computer as the brain, all the commands are sent step by step. And if you get a glitch from the computer, I don't know, your screen server went on. Who has screen server nowadays? I don't know. You may lose a step on your stepper motor. But if you're using a controller, the computer will send the entire program to the controller and it will take over and run each step smoothly. All right, let's start with the computer. I used an old Pentium 2 with Windows XP. I needed an old computer because I wanted a LPT parallel port to connect with the breakout board. If you want to use a more recent computer, you can buy a USB motion controller like the UC100. Or, as I mentioned, you can buy an entire controller that has a chip on it. Okay, let's do the electrical diagram. And to simplify things, I will illustrate only one axis. First of all, you're going to connect your computer to the breakout board using a DB25 connector. Then you're going to power it up that breakout board using a 5 volt power supply. Using the same 5 volt power supply, you will connect it to the drive on Pulse Plus and Direction Plus. You will then connect Pulse and Direction Ground to some output pins on the breakout board. To give the power to the stepper motor, you're going to connect your 60 volt power supply to your drive. And then using the electrical diagram from the supplier of the stepper motor, you will connect the correct colored wires to the drive pins a plus and minus and B plus and minus. I cannot tell you exactly which color is for which pin because it will vary depending on the supplier of the motor. Okay, you're almost done here. You're gonna need some limit switches. To connect these switches, one side will go on the positive side of the 5 volt power supply and the other side will connect to one input pin. The limit switches are used to own the machine. You have to understand that when you power up the CNC, it doesn't know where in XYZ the gantry is positioned. By ohming the CNC, each axis will move until it reaches out its limit switch. You can set in Mark III the limits, which is the maximum distance each axis can travel. By doing so, the CNC will know its working area, and it should prevent some crashes. Speaking of crashes, it should be a good idea to install an e-stop because I actually had some crashes during testing and even after. So you're gonna need an e-stop for those hopefully rare occasions. You connect the e-stop exactly like the limit switch. If you did connect everything correctly, you should end up with something like this. Okay, now the software. Like I said, I'm using Mark III to run the CNC, but you can now buy Mark IV. I won't do a complete tutorial on the software, there's other videos for that, but I will show you the key settings to get started. So under the Ports and Pins menu, in the tab Motor Outputs, you will enter the pin numbers in the Step and Direction column. You will associate pin numbers from the output pins on the breakout board that are connected to the drive. And you will do that for each axis. Into the tab input signals, you will associate pin numbers from the input pins of the breakout board for the limit switches and the e-stop. And finally, I already showed you this menu earlier in this video, which is motor ohm soft limits to set the limits of each axis. But you can also give the travel direction for each axis in this menu. If your machine runs in reverse, you just have to check or uncheck in this column. You can also set in the same menu the direction for ohming which is in this column. Oh, and one last thing. This is the motor tuning and setup menu. This is where you will tune your stepper motors in combination with how your drives are set. This is where you will set the step per revolution. Also, you will set the speed and the axle for each axis. To set the number of step per revolution, you just have to run the calibration test in Mark III. 
The procedure is simple. You set a distance, usually it's one inch, and you install on the machine a dial indicator. You run the tests and enter the result from your dial indicator into Mark III. It's now calibrated, it's that simple. I will do a test precision later on this video and it's exactly the same procedure. For the three axes, I use Acme Run for the drive system. They are precise, they are within a thousand of an inch per foot and they're not super expensive. Unfortunately, during testing, I was hoping to get at least 100 inches per minute. Uh, this is the minimum speed you want to get if you want to plasma cut some thin sheet of steel. So because the Acme Rod gave the drive system so much reduction, I had to get the stepper motor into high RPMs and they were just not powerful enough to get the speed that I needed. So I had two options, get a bigger stepper motor or change the drive system. Guess what? I did both. Yeah, I first bought a bigger stepper motor kit with new drives and new bigger power supplies and everything. It was a NEMA 34 kit with 1200 ounces of torque with 60 volt power supplies because more volt, more power, baby. Even with the NEMA 34, I kept hearing this sound. Boy, did I hear this sound during the building of this CNC. This is the sound of a failing stepper motor. Not enough torque for the RPM it's turning. So I had no choice but to change the drive system for the X and Y axis. Luckily, since I don't need much speed in the Z axis, I kept the Acme Rod and the Nemo 23 stepper motor. For the X axis, I bought a timing belt. In combination with the bigger motor, I was now able to reach 850 inches per minute, which is more than I need. I verified the precision with the system and it was plus and minus 7,000 of an inch, which is okay for a plasma cutting, but kind of bad for a routing CNC. So I went on a different path for the Y axis and I chose the rack and pinion. The precision improved, but was not consistent along the rack. I think that if you buy a better quality rack and pinion than mine, you should have good results. And to build the router and plasma CNC, rack and pinion is the way to go. For both systems, I had to use a timing belt and pulleys. The reason is simple. The pinion was too small to install directly on the stepper motor shaft. Okay, now let's do a quick precision test for each type of drive system. So this is the rack and pinion. Now let's do the timing belt. And finally, the Acme Rod. As you can see, the more precise is definitely the Acme Rod. So if you're looking to build a precise CNC, ball screw and Acme Rod are the ways to go. But for a cheap router and plasma CNC, Rack and Pinion is just perfect. Okay, it's now time for the cutting test. I will draw a 2x2 L-shaped piece with 1 inch sides and it's gonna be 1 8 thick. Using sheet cam, I will do a quick program to run in Mark III. Okay, let's cut it. As you can see, the machine will vary in precision. 
but it's good enough for me. And finally, the cost of a cheap DIY CNC. If you don't take into account the extra stepper motor kit that I bought and the extra Acme rods, you should be less rich by at least 2000 US dollar for this type and size of CNC. So guys, if you have any questions, let me know in the description below. I will do my best to answer it with the knowledge I acquired during this build. And thank you for watching.